Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to another episode of The Trans Atheist. My name is Ariana, and I will be your host. So today is a podcast that I think is particularly important, so let me start with giving you a little bit of the background story. So on June 27th, the Mercer County Right to Life, our local pro-force birth lobbying group, gathered at the Mercer County Courthouse in Salina, Ohio to celebrate the overturning of Roe v. Wade. They were met with pro-choice counter-protesters. Uh, in full disclosure, I was not able to attend at the time. I wish I had been able to, but this event included guest speakers. Among them is the right-wing sister-in-law of City Council President Jason King and a current candidate for state representative known as Angie King. The event was proudly supported by a number of right-wing theocratic churches including Alethea Christian Church. The counter-protesters came with signs and chants Many of those signs were deemed vulgar by the right-wing extremists who are more offended by words than by the stripping of civil rights for women and other pregnant people. Among the protesters was a local nurse. Um, and part of what she had shouted was that her willingness to provide reproductive counseling to anyone needing it. The nurse also mentioned vasectomies. Um, according to some of the protesters, I haven't seen that particular video, um, which seems more than reasonable when you consider the fact that the pregnant person can get pregnant once in a nine-month time frame. The person doing the impregnating could literally cause thousands of pregnancies within that same time frame. Now, as a result of this protest, uh, this counter-protest, and this whatever you want to call the group that gathered together originally, the pastor of the aforementioned right-wing church collected photos and videos of counter-protesters. He then formed an online group where he and his ilk held an echo chamber of condemnation, particularly they zoomed in on any photos or still shots of the woman in, a nurse, in nursing scrubs. That woman was seen holding a sign that said, Who made you the coochie boss? Personally, I love that one. In puritanical fashion, even the word coochie was too much and had to be edited to C asterisk asterisk C-H-I-E. Funny, were it not so incredibly pathetic. Included in the comments were demands to know who the nurse was, photos of her Facebook profile, and exposure of her employer. It was in that same group that protesters who are transgender were purposefully misgendered, claims that trans people have their genitals mutilated or cut off, and that we're confused and, quote, very emotionally distraught. These comments came from a former school teacher who thankfully no longer has that same access to the community's children. It took about 10 days for that to result in the nurse getting fired from her job. According to the nurse, on Monday, she was told by her employer that they, quote, no longer have confidence in your ability to lead. She was also told that she was being terminated because suggesting boys get vasectomies was, quote, vulgar, as well as her offering support for girls who need advice about abortions from a health care provider. I reached out to the nurse and she provided the following comment and statement. And I am going to read that verbatim. 
please bear with me because I wanted to give her every opportunity to say what she felt she needed to say. Quote, I would like to say first and foremost, thank you so much to those that have reached out to me offering support. After reading a dozen comments angrily asking who I am and being unable to respond due to the blatant bias censorship put in place to control the narrative of a hateful and intolerant pastor and his congregation, I would like to answer that. I am a third generation Mercer County resident, graduate of Salina School, and mother of three almost grown children. I am also reformed Catholic, a teen mother, a wife, a nurse, an activist, a volunteer, and someone who deeply cares about the welfare of others. I know for a fact that this has very much shaped the way I feel about this specific topic. I can acknowledge that everyone didn't have the same opportunities and support system I did to raise my choice. I also recognize the systemic and racial barriers put in place to prevent people from having explicit control of their reproductive path. I worked two jobs and went to college full-time to become a nurse. A lot of motivation was spite. The same people claiming, quote, life is precious, and that, quote, we just need Jesus, were sending me letters saying my baby was an abomination and that I was going to burn in hell at 17. Someone to my face asked me how many babies I was having so he would know how much welfare he was paying me. I have spent years being on the opposite side of the church and their more rabid and extreme believers in this community. I have never had a problem with this in my professional life prior to this march. I believe mostly because I was sheltered from the reality of working directly in the land of cross-tipped churches. So much pride our citizens feel to be from such a tight-knit community. The sheriff, after thanking us for coming and exercising our right to protest, by the way, said, quote, This is what makes Mercer County such a great place to live. I knew immediately what he meant, but groaned externally like many of my fellow protesters. Why? because a loud minority has been allowed to control the safety and security of the rest here without contest. Small towns thrive on shame to keep people in line. I refuse. I am straight and white, and until I put on scrubs, I was safe. Not everyone can remove their identifiers. I am lucky I chose to stand with you as a healthcare worker, knowing people are going to die because of this misplaced Christian nationalism. You are safe. I am a safe person. I am not afraid to say it, and I am not afraid of what any church thinks about me. They decided I wasn't worthy a long time ago. I am disappointed my former employer, especially as a provider of health care and a steward of science, would cow down to a small extremist religious group instead of standing up for and celebrating my speaking for those unable. I will be okay. This will not slow me down. We are going to change the world despite these setbacks. What really makes Mercer County great is the fact that people like you are fighting back against this. We are no longer leaving, quote, because we don't belong. Mercer County has countless people afraid to be themselves because of church retaliation. I will keep speaking out for you all until you can for yourself. Hashtag my body, my choice. Hashtag abortion is health care. 
Now, I reached out to the hospital, not for confirmation on any information. I know how hiring and termination decisions are. Overlook the birds in the background. Um, I know how hiring and firing uh, decisions are. They are very closely guarded by companies. Um, I wasn't expecting any sort of information on that. But I reached out to send my complaint, as I'm sure they had heard from more than enough of our local cultists. I received a call back where I was told HR would not speak to me. They said that they would be unable to provide details. I told the person that I spoke with that I never expected to be provided anything and that I simply wanted to lodge a complaint. I was curtly told no one would be doing that either. That health care provider was Mercer County, uh, Mercer Health, not Mercer County Health like the county agency, Mercer Health, a local hospital company, local health care company. The same group of people, or at least those affiliated with Alethea, and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right and honestly couldn't care less, and other local churches are now passing around petitions to get an ordinance on the ballot for Salina. It attempts to make Salina a, quote, sanctuary city for the unborn. Late last year, they attempted to use the same ordinance but they attempted to pass it through a city council meeting. Um, it was largely spearheaded by council president Jason King and brother-in-law of House of Repre Ohio House of Representatives candidate Angie King. It failed to pass. According to one of the organizers of the petition drive, they used this past Sunday services at local churches to get signatures, yet more politicizing of the church. I haven't seen the text of the petition, and I haven't seen a copy of this version of the ordinance. I don't know how or if it differs from previous incarnations of this ordinance. In the original ordinance, um, well, let me go back. Um, the organizer has said that this ordinance would, in fact, go further than Ohio's six-week abortion ban. The original uh, purveyor of this ordinance was a man by the name of Mark Lee Dixon, who traveled here to promote this ordinance. He was also highly involved in Texas' anti-abortion measure, and he has traveled around the country picking on small towns, to try to get these passed, and when they fail, or if they fail, then he does like he did here, and attempts to stir trouble by organizing people against their elected leaders, which in a small town environment is literally their neighbors. So at the time of that original ordinance, here are a few of the points from it. Number one, it had no exceptions for rape or incest. Number two, People could be reported for suspected abortion. Number three, the pregnant person would have to, vent, have to defend themselves against the suspected abortion allegation. Number four, any person attempting to help someone get an abortion could be sued, fined, and or imprisoned. And number five, neighbors family, and so-called friends could receive payments for reporting a suspected abortion. Among some of the other issues that this, that this ordinance raises is about what would be considered abortofascist drugs, um, um, certain medications, the morning after pill, would that be covered in this? If so, this could affect a number <coughs> of businesses in our community not simply the small mom and pop businesses, which may have more options to remove product if they felt they needed to, but we also have large chains like Walmart, which does, uh, of course, provide um, different medications based on a doctor's prescription, and as, as well as over-the-counter morning-after pills. Um, 
So in my previous podcast, I had kind of talked a little bit about this right-wing cult. As a matter of fact, I have one called My Local Right-Wing Cult. Kind of covers it, doesn't it? So this group is not only anti-abortion, they're also very homophobic and transphobic. Um, but I'd also like to include that this was this sanctuary city nonsense, this anti-abortion nonsense, was not only supported by Althea, it was also supported by the local Catholic churches. In fact, when it comes to bigotry, it was the Catholic Conference of Ohio that has testified in favor of transphobic bills in the state of Ohio. So what we're seeing can't simply be nailed to abortion. It's not that simple. The SCOTUS decision has emboldened these Christian nationalists, and they're now pushing in every instance to have their doctrine instilled as law or local ordinance wherever they can. We have to be prepared to stand up and fight just as hard as the people who are attempting to take our rights away from us. So that kind of finishes up the prepared um, prepared podcast, the things that I wanted to videotape. I normally don't have a script that I go by because I like to just kind of speak how I'm feeling, but I felt this was important enough to have things kind of organized. But I do want to um, kind of go off script now. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the nurse, Amanda, for being willing to speak with me, for standing up for every one of us, for putting your job on the line when you should have never had to. The fact that you even had to put your job on the line is a failure, not only of our community, but a failure of our health care system that we don't support health care providers when they stand up for reproductive health care. Because, again, reproductive health care is health care. So I wanted to kind of go, though, into a little bit more and something that I found incredibly ironic. So I want to read you something that was first posted by the council president, Jason King. It's a little mem, it's a little bit long, but I'm going to read it anyway because I find it very interesting. This mem sets up a conversation between, quote, secular person and Christian. So secular person says, I want to do X. Christian responds, you're free to do it. Secular person says, but you think X is wrong. Christian says, yes. Secular person says, because you want to control me. Christian says, no, you're free to do whatever you wish. Secular person says, but you think X is wrong. Christian says, yes, but only because I want what's best for you. Secular person says, but I want to do X. Christian says, you're free to do it. Secular person says, but I want you to say that X is good. Christian says, I can't say that. Secular person says, why are you such a hateful, intolerant bigot? Now, obviously the point being made by this little mem is that Christians are just expressing their opinion, but you're still free to do what you want. No one's forcing you uh, to follow their opinion. And that would be somewhat fine. I mean, I would be okay with that. The irony is that this was being posted by the council president who was supporting the Sanctuary City Bill. The very bill that made abortion illegal, the very bill that would make you have to defend yourself for a suspected abortion, the very bill, or ordinance, I guess I should say, that would make it so that if you assisted someone with an abortion, be it financially or drove them, etc., you would be a criminal, facing fines, maybe even imprisonment. Um, so obviously, um, he wasn't saying, you're free to do it. He was saying, I'm going to enforce what I believe. It's quite the opposite. It's just like, you know, a phrase I've always used on marriage equality and gay marriage. You are free to not believe in gay marriage, just as you're free to not get, not believe in abortion. 
And what do you do about that belief? Well, if you don't believe in gay marriage, you don't marry someone of the same gender. If you don't believe in abortion, you don't get one. The problem is that Christians, like Jason King, like the pastor of Althea, is that their view is, I don't believe in gay marriage, therefore you can't do it either. I don't believe in abortion, therefore you can't get one either. And this was very well and totally didn't even see the irony. Another follower of these groups uh, by the name of Ryan actually reposted this meme. And I found it particularly funny because if you go through not too far below, he also has one of Clarence Thomas, a news article about how Clarence Thomas was speaking that with the, in his opinion, on the Dobbs decision, that they should look at the Obergefell marriage equality decision as well. Which he says, yes. And then another one where he says that uh, now, let me see if I can find this exact wording because I don't want to, you know, get it wrong here. Here we go. And in his other one, he just simply posted, this is a slow process, my computer is old. Reverse Obergefell now. So the irony is that he posted this, basically this meme of you can do what you want, but as Christians that doesn't mean I'll agree with it. And then turns back around to advocate for people not being able to do what they want. Um, you know, it doesn't matter that we're not part of their little Christian cult. They still don't want us to have marriage rights that differ from them because they want to instill their doctrine into our law. This is the battle that we are up against. The alt-right, the Christian nationalist, the evangelical extremist, are not here simply wanting their rights. They want the right to take away yours. They want to ri the right to dictate how you live your life. And they want the right. I, I recently, just another thing to turn up on this, which I found particularly funny. Let me get my phone. So there's another candidate um, nearby. His name is J.J. Srinan. So, I had asked him about his view on LGBT rights. Now, he is, of course, a right-wing Republican. Ironically, he's a doctor and also an anti-vaxxer, if you go based on what he's saying, that's what it would seem. So, he says on here, I will not support any legislation that infringes on my First Amendment rights in regards to my freedom of religion. Okay. For example, marriage is between a man and a woman. This term is well defined by the Christian faith. I have no issue with civil unions, but the use of the marriage term infringes on my rights. I quickly pointed out that number one... Marriage is not a strictly Christian institution. Um, as a matter of fact, not only is some form of it in nearly every religion, there's also very secular, you know, our current marriage license. I don't go to the church to get a marriage license. I go to the courthouse. I don't have to have a pastor get, you know, solemnize my marriage for it to be legal, I can go and have a judge do it. Anyone can. So it is not a religious thing. I pointed out that it sounds a lot like he endorses a separate but equal doctrine. Of course, since that point, I've gotten no further response, which actually puts him in a better place than Angie King, who I have messaged a number of times, starting all the way back in March, when she had very recently announced her candidacy, about her view of transgender and LGBT rights in general, why should an LGBT person vote for her. That conversation has went through all the way through Monday, 
Um, thanks to loud birds. Um, thanks to Facebook, I can see when you read my message, and thus far, she's been too cowardly to answer any of them. Now, why hasn't she answered? Well, I can't say specifically. I have a hunch. My hunch is because she has no intention of supporting all citizens in the 84th district. I think we're 84th or 83rd. It's hard to keep track because they keep screwing this all up. Nope, 82nd, I guess. I don't know. They've got this so jacked up with our gerrymandered maps. But she has no intention of representing all citizens. She has the intention of representing white Christian nationalists. That's exactly what she is, and that's exactly what she'll represent. That is what is going on in our country right now. That is why we must stand up. We must continue to fight. And yes, I know that the famous phrase from Michelle Obama, and I've probably mentioned this before, I can't remember for sure, is, when they go low, we go high. I love Michelle Obama, but that quote had an expiration date stamped right on its ass. It's dead. It's expired. Now when they go low, we've got to go lower. We need politicians that are going to be willing to get dirty because, frankly, if what we are talking about, equality for LGBT people, for women, for people of color, an end to police violence, an end to these restrictive religious doctrines placed into our law. What we have to have, if it's worth fighting for, then it's worth getting just as dirty as they are. We've got to do what's right for our communities, what's right from a constitutional standpoint, and I'm sorry, the Supreme Court was not on the side of the Constitution here. And we have to fight back against these people. That's why I have no problem exposing the Catholics, the Evangelicals, the whatever other group. That's why I have no problem exposing Althea, Christian cult, because that's what they are. We've got to stand. We've got to fight. Thank you for those who are. And let's keep the momentum going. We've got a long road ahead of us. This nation has truly taken a turn to complete and total crap right now. Thanks to the emboldenment of racist, of white nationalists, of Christian nationalist theocrats, we got a lot of work ahead of us. And we've got to start it from everything from council positions all the way up to the presidency. Ending with my quote from Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down whether those bastards happen to be serving on a town council, running for state representative, or organizing your local church. Fight. Stand strong. And ultimately, we have something that they don't have. Something worth fighting for. Have a great day, and I'll see you at the next episode of The Trans Atheist. Thanks, and bye-bye.